module on the left is a combination of many of the modules that we've built in the past, starting with the basic oscillator based on a 4106 chip, controlled by a knob for pitch. It's got sync. It's got the LFO, factual based low pass filter with variable rate. And the cutoff knob, which was down a little bit there, just turned it up. And we can bypass the LFO, turn that off, and just have the cutoff knob be the uh, cutoff. Straight up cut off. Got a volume knob down here to the bottom left. And a clock out with a spare one of the 4106 um, Schmidt triggers. You can use a clock out in the future for a sequencer. Over here back on oscillator one, I've got this ohm out right here. So you can patch in different resistances in place of the potentiometer right here. So if we flip that, then it'll be controlled by this stylophone that I built over here. with a piece of VHS tape right here for a slider. And of course you can pick whatever pitch you want for these. Get true bleepy bloops. <laughs> and yeah, so you can patch anything in there that you want. Um, I've made a little probe here. Just to experiment with anything that you really want to. Uh, this probe is just a jack and two leads. So it's two leads on what you want to be the source of resistance. So you can patch that in pretty easily. And now we can try out different stuff as sources of resistance. Try out this banana. <coughs> the banana screams. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go back to the probes now and just experiment with a couple of things on the breadboard. So this is nice because you don't have to make a whole new um, oscillator module if you want to try out some different source of resistance. So let's say I wanted some finer control over oscillator 1's pitch. So for right now, I just got this default one. So let's say we want to wire in a 100K and a 10K to have finer control over our pitch. Um, that just goes into the probe that I made earlier that has leads that go into a breadboard. So I've got these two in series. So this is the coarse one, the 100K. Just like the knob that we have there, 100K. So maybe I want to have it here, and then I want to have a little bit more fine tuning. I'll use this one. And I'll probably turn that down, the 10K, and then I'll change this one. Oop, just get that lead in a little bit better. There we go. Oop. So now we got that higher range, and we get some uh, finer control over that.
we go. That works. If I like it, I can make it into a module, and then I'd have a little thing to patch in there. So for this one, I wanted to see how two light-dependent resistors would sound in series instead of using just one. So I find that it tightens up the range instead of using it for just one, so I can patch it for just one. So that gets really high in squelchy pretty quick, but when they're in series, you have two of them. Tames it a little bit, squishes that range, so it's a little lower, a little more pleasant. And you can still get pretty high if you want. Yeah, but I find you can get a little bit better control with two in series, so maybe I'd make a module with that, just a little box. But I want to go to light dependent resistor mode with that thing. Here's a schematic of the module. It's a combination of all of the things that we've built in the past. So starting on the left side, we've got the coarse sync oscillator that feeds into the main oscillator. And if we go up, we'll see a toggle switch. And that toggle switch goes up to the ohm in. That's the jack where you can send out to whatever module you create for this expandable module. Um, just below that's the regular pitch knob. And then it's the same as the vectoral base low pass filter from there. So you can see the vectoral base low pass filter on the bottom, and then the clock I've added in on the bottom left. So that clock can be used to sync other hardware, like a sequencer that I'm going to make in the future, or that you may have seen in some of my other videos. So basically, if you can build everything that we've built in the past, we're just smashing it together into one module and then adding the ohm in so that we can make other modules without having to make an entirely new oscillator circuit. You can just experiment with whatever source of resistance you like using the ohm in. Now let's take a look at the schematic for the stylophone. So let's start with our main circuit. We've got our Schmidt trigger. And that goes to your capacitor of your choosing. And then normally we'll go up to a potentiometer, but instead of doing that, we're going to have that ohm out function there. Or that ohm out patch. So one end of that is going to a rail that's full of potentiometers. So I'll make a rail here, which is just, uh, I use a copper strip in mine, and then I would take a potentiometer and Take the right leg of it if you're looking at it face on, say the dial is like this. Take that right leg, patch it into that rail, and the middle leg is going to go to a copper pad. And then you have a wand or stylus to make contact with that. I put a screw on the end of a stick, and then a soldered a wire to that, and then that wire will go back and complete the circuit for your Schmidt trigger. And if you build a bunch of different potentiometer setups here, you'll end up with, I'll just put circles for each one, just put four for now, but I have eight, right? So each one goes to its own pad, repeat that process, and then you can select whichever one you want. So it's basically just a multi-switch, uh, multi and you're just selecting each one, change the pitch of each one to your desired scale, whatever you want to do, and uh, there you go, you have a stylophone. So uh, yeah, in short, you're just selecting different potentiometers with whatever conductive wand of your choosing, and yep, that's how I set mine up. VHS tapes are, are also fairly conductive, and you can make a uh, touch strip right here. It's not the best, but uh, it's fun to add in some effects. So yep, there we go, that's my stylophone. Let's take a look at the back of the stylophone. You can see each of the eight potentiometers with a blue and a yellow wire. The yellow wires are all going to a copper strip on the right side that will go to the jack. And then all of the blue wires are going to the conductive plates on the other side. So you can see how the blue wires are going into the holes on the left side. They're also going into the holes on the right side, but you can't really see it. Those blue ones are not going to the conductive strip on the right. Only the yellow ones are doing that. And then the VHS tape is the green wire on the bottom uh, that's connected to the uh, electrical tape there that's going to the other side so that that piece of wire can touch the VHS tape. So for the jack, one of the wires is coming from all of the yellow legs and the other part of the jack is going to be the wand. 
When you touch the wand to one of the conductive plates, it completes the circuit and plays the pitch of the selected potentiometer. Here's a demo of the stylophone in action with a drone. So I'm using the dual drone to play two pitches in the background, and then I've set the stylophone to several different pitches. I've also added in some effects like delay, reverb, and a polyoctave generator. Enjoy.